and welcome to Hewlett Packard Enterprise Discover 2023 Las Vegas and our highlights show. I'm Shibani Joshi. Today we'll break down all the biggest news and the most exciting developments to come out of HPE Discover and we'll get a little sneak peek into what lies ahead for HPE, for customers and for the marketplace as a whole. Joining me now to share their perspective on everything we've learned this week are two leading industry analysts, Carolina Milanesi, President and Principal Strategist at Creative Strategies and Addison Snell, co-founder and CEO of Intersect 360 Research. Thanks to you both for being here. Thanks, I want to start off with you, Carolina. You heard some of the news about HPE's new AI capabilities, particularly for HPE GreenLake and the platform. What are your thoughts on this and what do you think it means for HPE? I think it's the right thing at the right time. Um, there's a lot of enterprises, especially small and medium size, that are trying to figure out what to do with generative AI. And being able to do it with a partner that not only is gonna guide them to understand how to use the data, what insights to get from the data, but also have a solution that is scalable without right. putting the pressure of the cost up front yeah. is absolutely going to be critical. And I think the ability that HP has to HP has to do that, and also the understanding that they have of international markets and their requirements from law right. and regulations is absolutely critical. Yeah, that's you make a good point about the different regulations across the globe. Um, Addison, what is your reaction to uh, Antonio's keynote and, and how it places HPE in the competitive marketplace? Yeah, thanks, Shabani. Clearly, it's been a Green Lake oriented show, and that's been <coughs> a message that really has come across clearly. I think the biggest most exciting news from our perspective, especially as analysts that focus on high performance segments, has been the the, uh, the GreenLake uh, cloud for large language models. And I like what Carolina said about the right announcement at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, that's really capitalizing on a lot of the enthusiasm around LLMs right now. But as someone who's tracked high performance computing and AI, we can really see a broad applicability of this for high performance cloud oriented services beyond strictly LLM and I think that's really well-timed in the market right now. What are some of the challenges um, that you believe these news announcements are trying to address and do they get the job done? Yeah, well, a big challenge for end users right now that's come across clearly in our research is that uh, there's been a diversification of workloads that I've got the same enterprise or high performance technical workloads that I've had for decades. And then 10 years ago, I had to start doing big data and analytics. And now I have to start doing machine learning and AI and nobody tripled my budget, yeah. right? <laughs> and I'm trying to manage all of these things either on-prem or in the cloud, usually in some kind of hybrid environment and finding a vendor who can uh, provide leadership in not just saying, hey, we can deliver whatever you want, but give me guidance in terms of how do I serve all these applications in an intelligent way without, you know, the fear is that in 18 months, I'm going to have a new boss who's going to say, what idiot bought all of this stuff, right? right? I would like to have some kind of confidence moving forward that I'm delivering this in an efficient way. Go ahead, I think yeah. the, the other part is that uh, sustainability is on the mind yeah. of every CEO and yeah. CTO in the world, right? And so being able to uh, have a partner that has sustainability in mind from the get-go and so is thinking about deploying uh, LLMs in a responsible way mm -hmm. is absolutely critical critical not just for your business for being you know doing the right thing but also again going back to regulators we're going to have to be much more transparent right in in how sustainable our businesses are and so that's something that i really appreciate throughout the keynote yesterday and today that sustainability is absolutely uh, at the center of the solution. What else have you noticed, Carolina, on the floor um, of Discover this year? It's been a jam-packed few days. What other themes or um, ideas caught your interest? Um, there's a lot around ESG across the, the uh, front, and uh, with that, uh, trust, privacy, uh, data. I, I love what Antonio said yesterday about having a lot of data but very poor insights, right? With right. data rich but insights poor. And I think that that goes back to your point just now about, you know, yes, I can get all this data, but then how I'm going to make my knowledge uh, actionable, you know, how am I going to take advantage of that? Because otherwise you end up just spending money, right? For the sake of spending money and getting all this data. So being able to do 
more with less when it comes to data sure. is going to be important. Uh, more with less and doing more is certainly the theme. Addison, um, what are some of the opportunities that you're seeing out there for leaders in the midst of all of this change and this you know, rapidly um, uncertain environment on many different levels, but also ripe with opportunity? Well, yeah, I'll build on something Carolina just said in terms of spending money for the sake of spending money. I think what we have to be on guard against is AI for the sake of AI, yeah. yes. right? And there's a lot of, you know, chat GP2 is fantastic and we're going to look, write me a poem about whatever and then it'll <laughs> generate 12 lines of really awful free verse. Getting past that to say, what's the actual business application right. of this? What am I going to do that makes a qualitative difference for my enterprise going forward? I do like the sustainability angle with this and, and what I'll build on from that with the keynote is I really liked how Antonio and the team put the supercomputing expertise in context. So we can do the frontier supercomputer, so what? I mean, well, that's great for scientific research, but where does that technology now have applicability to my actual business right. to make a difference? And I think we are seeing that. It is going to be services led in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. and that really brings it right back around to GreenLake. Carolina, as we wrap up here, what will you be watching going forward? What's on your radar screen? I think if you look at what it was announced here, uh, it was clear that the investment that HP has made throughout the years are paying off, right? Mm -hmm. And so is the foresight of seeing where the industry is going and getting there before everybody else is. Uh, even when maybe you know people are looking at you as if like, mm, that acquisition doesn't quite make sense or it doesn't quite fit in. Um, clearly there's a lot there that still has to happen around AI. Um, and I think what I'm looking for is continue to see the culture of HPE making a difference to the company and driving trust and uh, um, just really a, an ecosystem of partners that are focused on doing better and making money and doing well at the same time. Yeah, with all the risks and uncertainties out Absolutely. there around AA, that trust aspect is crucial. Uh, Carolina and Addison, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. That's the analyst perspective. Let's hear from some attendees what their big takeaways were from HPE Discover this year. Victoria Anderson caught up with some customers and partners on the floor. You know, what I like a lot about the keynote yesterday and today is that they are so much connected. So Antonio gave us like a big picture of what to expect, of what is new. Today on the second keynote with the CTO, she did the detail from the summary of the opening keynote of Antonio. And it was great to see in a practice way how it works. As a partner, we make it a point to attend Discover for three main reasons. To hear the big announcement that HP makes and how it is leading the charter for the industry. Second is to showcase uh, the leading innovation on the floor. And third is to hear the partner-friendly announcement that HP makes at Discover every year. Super excited to be here. There are so many interesting folks here. There are so many in, you know, bright minds in here. And this is a really inspiring environment for me and you know, for our business. So hopefully, hopefully, you know, this will be in kind of like a, a, an experience that's going to resonate us you know, for maybe even till next year, till next HP Discover. Thanks, Victoria. You know, there are many thought leaders here at HPE Discover, and one of the conference speakers is noted political scientist and global risk consultant Ian Bremer, president of the Eurasia Group and G Zero Media. I sat down with him to get some of his thoughts on AI. Take a look. In a recent piece for Time, you wrote that artificial intelligence will be the most powerful engine for prosperity in history. Share some of the specifics behind that statement. Where's the growth? Where is it coming from? Uh, the growth is billions of people online that in short order will have access to tools, educational tools, healthcare tools, productivity tools that will unlock a massive amount of human capital. People are going to become AI adjacent and those people will become more efficient, more productive, more capable in the global economy. So what does AI adjacent mean? Uh, it means that you have the direct ability to use AI to solve challenges that have limited your human development. We've just lived through 50 years of globalization. Yeah. People have had big advantages from opening up markets. We get access to cheaper capital, cheaper labor. We get to move goods and services all over the world. That's right. created a big global middle class. Right. Now, AI 
does that in the tech space in a way that the internet never really could. You have access to the internet, it's great, you have access to information, but you don't necessarily have access to knowledge. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily know how to deploy it. You don't have real-time understanding of what the planet looks like. AI gets you that. And so I do believe that th there's a reason why we're seeing this level of hype, the hundreds of billions of dollars that are being invested, the massive share price explosion that's occurring. This is not an NFT bubble. I want to be very clear about this. This is, this is a different. truly, this is a transformative technology. For more on AI, be sure to check out our Adapting to an AI World Show on the HPE Discover More Network. Now, for more on what lies ahead, I'm joined by Lata Vishnu Butla, Chief Platform Officer at HPE, and Kevin McCammon, Global Head of Digital Infrastructure Solutions at Henkel Corporation. Thanks to you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Lata, I want to start with you. There's been a lot of news this week at HPE Discover. How does that position HPE for the future? Yeah, so there were a lot of exciting announcements uh, during this Discover. Uh, and when I look at AI, you know, the AI offered uh, in the public cloud, it's a huge advancement how the customers can run their uh, LLMs uh, in this, in this um, uh, cloud and uh, derive insights and derive uh, valuable um, outcomes for their own businesses. That's very exciting for me. Kevin, I want to ask you, uh, please share your sp perspective from the customer point of view. How are you positioning for the future? What do you see as the most um, challenging or pressing need ahead to address? Yeah, so from that standpoint, it really comes down to giving the business the freedom and the ability to do what they need to do. So from that standpoint, we have to have technology that can move quickly and change quickly. And one of the things that you know is critical for us is that infrastructure and the support needs to be transparent to the business. The business needs to move quick. Absolutely, and Letha, what is the future of hybrid cloud in your mind? How do you see it evolving? What should um, forward-looking business leaders be thinking about so that they're ready and ready to seize this opportunity? So first of all, the enterprises are going through digital transformation. And uh, you've, you've heard during the keynotes, 70% uh, of the workloads are running outside public cloud. 50% uh, uh, plus data is in the edge. So now with this kind of an arrangement, you know, the customers, um, how can they leverage their data to put themselves at a competitive advantage? You know, how they can be on the trajectory for growth and profitability? You know, those are some of the key things that the future leaders uh, must be looking at. Um, essentially, data is king. Right. So how to go about with the data for strategy, AI for strategy, right. And that's something they should be looking at and how we can help uh, these customers through the GreenLake uh, Edge to Cloud platform and uh, the services that we are offering through that platform. Terrific. Kevin, looking ahead at your specific business, where do you see the biggest opportunities for growth and expansion? Uh, the biggest growth is the ability to automate infrastructure. <laughs> Uh, so from that standpoint, you know, being able to take infrastructure to the next level, to what Latha was talking about as far as data. Uh, data is the king, but you got to get that data from point A to point B. Right. Latha, as we think about the future for HPE GreenLake, how do you see it evolving? So uh, today we have uh, 2.5 million devices on the platform, 22,000 organizations. Wow and 65,000 customer instances. That's already a big number. We are looking at growing that exponentially in the coming years. And also adding all of the innovative services for the customers who are on a hybrid multi-cloud journey. Um, and there is a testament here at Discover, uh, and we showed sustainability dashboard. Yeah. Yeah. We also showed ops ramp. Those are just some examples. There is more to come, so stay tuned. Uh, you know, you will enjoy more and more services from this platform. Great, we have a lot to look forward to, but thank you so much for your time today. Both Letha and Kevin appreciated this conversation. Thank, thank you. you. Well, it's been a really busy week with a lot of news and fascinating forward-looking discussions on complex issues like sustainability, security, and the future of AI. Let's take a look at some of the headlines from this year's keynotes. AI will be the most disruptive technology of our lifetime, and 2023 will be remembered as an historic technology inflection point. 
HP is making one of the boldest bets in the history of our company. We believe the most trusted and powerful AI training tools must be accessible to all. And to make that possible, this is the big announcement, HP is entering the AI public cloud market. Today, I'm pleased to introduce the first in a series of industry and domain specific AI applications that will run on HP's industry leading supercomputers and AI software powered by nearly 100% renewable energy. HP GreenLake for large language models will enable any enterprise to privately train, tune, and deploy large scale AI through an on-demand, multi-tenant supercomputing cloud service. We are playing a prominent role in AI, leveraging our unique ability to build, supply, and support scalable AI native architectures led by our long history of supercomputing leadership and innovation. So I'm here today to show you how we are doing all of this and bringing it to you on the GreenLake platform. Instead of having to buy a supercomputer, of which I'm sure many of us do not have the budgets, you can now simply subscribe to HPE GreenLake for large language models as a service. And there you will have access to one of the most powerful supercomputers in the world to train your data or leverage our model hub, where you will have models that are developed and trained by yourself or other people. Joining me now to wrap up this action-packed week is Executive Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer at HPE, Jim Jackson. Good to see you, Jim. Good to see you. I want to start off, you know, there was a lot of news that came out of HPE Discover this yep. year. New products, new offerings, um, and some fascinating discussions. Yep. What do you hope attendees walked away with from this week? That we have a winning strategy and we're executing against it. You know, at the end of the day, we are an innovation-driven company and everything we do is for our customers. It's all about their outcomes and that was on full display this week. If you just look at the last couple of years, in 2018, we said that the world would be edge-centric, cloud-enabled, data-driven, yeah. and we've been executing against that and that came to life this week, which was great. In 2019, we said that we would deliver everything as a service by 2022, and we're doing that. And what you saw this week is a lot of focus on hybrid and edge, right. and really bringing that into the HP GreenLink Edge to Cloud platform. We talked about OpsRamp, which we just recently integrated, gives us IT operations management, AI driven. We can also now manage third party environments as well as HP. So that was really powerful, great discussion there. We talked about giving our customers more choice with private cloud solutions. We talked about integrating more deeply with AWS and with That's VMware. Right. So, you know, seeing all of that coming together. And then our announcement with uh, Equinox, right, where we're making it easier to now get onto HP GreenLake. And at the end of the day, it's all about data. Yeah. But you have to bring data. D data by itself isn't that useful. What it is, it's the insight from the data, and that's where AI comes in. Yep. And we made a huge announcement, probably the biggest announcement that we have ever made at Discover, where we announced that we are now entering the AI cloud market, yep. and we announced our first offering, which is HP GreenLake for large language models. And this is the first of several. And the final point here is we've been actually working on this for several years, so this was not new for us. Yeah. We're just now bringing it all forward. So it's a lot of excitement. Promises coming to life, yeah. and the industry reaction has been very positive, yep. calling on HPE's acquisitions and its strategies. What, do you've been, what have you been hearing from external um, parties out there about these announcements? Because that matters too. Yeah, absolutely. Had a chance to talk to a lot of customers, a lot of partners, a lot of influencers. I think very positive, right? They see us continuing to execute against our strategy you know and what our customers are looking for is okay how do I now consume this right what is the yeah. outcome it's going to deliver for us our partners are looking at how do they monetize that and how do they become part of that and we absolutely want that so I think um, you know again we have been on a journey and people pe the market saw us take another big step forward in delivering against that journey so it's been really really positive Internally within HPE, what is the big takeaway um, for you, your teams, as you look at the future? What are the big opportunities that you're going to walk away from HPE Discover with so you can deliver on next year? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think there's, there's lots of different conversations about the biggest trends, but I would narrow it down to data and AI, yeah. right? Those are the two things that we really had a lot of discussion around. 
And data, again, requires an edge to cloud solution, and that's what we've been focused on. You know, 50% of the data is generated at the edge, and with Aruba, we continue to invest there, continue yeah. to build that franchise, bring it all into that hybrid cloud environment, and that's where the platform is so important for us. It's our unifying concept. It's, like it's one experience that we can deliver to our customers. And then with AI, what we wanted to do is make it more accessible. Right. Right? AI requires massive computing power, and really it was held to just a, a rel relatively small set of government agencies or a few big companies that had a supercomputing cluster. We wanted to make AI accessible to the masses. So it was a great week. We've had a lot of really good discussions, and now we just want to build on that and continue the momentum. Absolutely. Jim, great to have you here today. Congratulations on a successful week. We Thank you. We look forward to seeing what comes from you and your team. Great to see you again. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Well, that is all from this year's HPE Discover Las Vegas. Be sure to watch some of our other programs, including an in-depth discussion on AI with some of the thought leaders at the center of this conversation, plus a lot more available on the HPE Discover More network. Thanks for watching and see you all next time.